Hi friends, welcome back. Today we're making Frankenstein Pop-Tarts and in this video I'm going to cover specifically the icing techniques I use to make these Franks. If you'd like the actual pastry recipe, I'm going to link it in the box below. It's actually Claire Saffitt's Pop-Tart recipe. She's got a video and a recipe up on Bon Appetit. It's really easy to follow. You can also just buy the uniced versions from the store if you're mainly interested in decorating. So without further ado, let's make some Frankenstein Pop-Tarts. So you'll want to start out with the eyes. You can actually buy these in store, but if you're already making this icing, I just kind of feel like it's a waste of money. You can buy them for $5 for a little pack, or you can just pipe out some round blobs and then pipe on some little black blobs. And that's basically what we're doing here. I ended up making a bunch of different sizes in case I wanted to use these in the future. And that's the great thing about doing this. You can just batch make as many as you want and then dry them out and save them for your future recipes. When you pipe the black pupils, you don't want to wait too long. You want that white icing to still be kind of wet so they'll settle in together. Otherwise, you'll have like a little mound on top of a mound. If you do make the Pop-Tarts from scratch, make sure that you just do a very thin layer and leave enough around the border to do an egg wash and seal the entire pastry. Then you'll just go in and trim those edges and dock everything. And docking just allows the steam to escape. The consistency of the filling should be pretty thick and not have a lot of water left, but there is still some water that will release steam, so it's important to give it some somewhere to go. So now you'll see that I used one icing consistency for all of the Pop-Tarts. This green is a piping consistency. Piping consistencies versus flood are much thicker and they don't really settle in on themselves very well. If you want to make a flood and a piping consistency, go for it. I think, you know, your final result will be a lot smoother, but I was fine with him being a little lumpy. Then you'll take your dry eyes, and here's what I found was really cool. If you set them onto the icing, wait a second, and then kind of drag them down a little bit, it'll pool under the eyes and it'll give like a little under eyelid effect. And then I went in with the same icing and made some eyelids on top. This is kind of, you know, the Neanderthal look. And this is the same black piping consistency that I used for the pupils. And the nose, you just kind of want to build up. So I made kind of like a teardrop shape and connected it to that eyebrow eyelid line and then um, kind of just built in the middle. And then you can take a scribe tool and just kind of smooth them out and connect them to that brow line. Somebody on social media said that they were really disappointed that my Frankensteins weren't smiling. I just feel like Frankenstein isn't really a smiley dude. I think he's kind of upset at being a hodgepodge man. I think he could even look angrier. You make your Franks have whatever expression you want. And then I just added a couple little bolts and you're done. You wanna let this dry for at least six, seven hours, especially those areas like the nose and the eyelids. Those are gonna be a little bit wet for a while. And then you can share them with your friends and enjoy. Happy Halloween, everyone.